All right, here's the video review of the Florida Air Museum in Lakeland, Florida. So they've got a nice General Electric TF-34 engine. Very cool. And then look at all these awesome planes. It's a pretty cool, neat little map here. Southwest Airlines. Southeast, sorry, excuse me, not even airlines. Just a map of the southeast. Some cool old signs, some neat old pictures. Celebrating 100 years of commercial flight in Tampa. There's some pins from Eastern Airlines. Look at that, Renault Southern Air. Neat, some old Delta wings. The logbook. This is cool. Jumbo cockpit simulation. Hopefully it's a simulation. Find out in a second. Not a simulator, but it's a decent mock-up. The jump seat. Simu well, let's say it keeps saying simulated, but uh, faux controls and stick. Yeah, this is pretty interesting because this is an old school control and airplanes have been using fly-by-wire for years and Tesla just added that to the Cybertruck and everyone's all up in arms that there's no actual steering uh, rack and pinion anymore but it's actual fly-by-wire or drive-by-wire steer-by-wire so you can take a Tesla and Cybertruck and make a full turn with just a turn like that instead of doing the giant motions of a normal steering wheel so aviation tends to lead to innovation and a lot of other industries follow and NOAA, their history. If you do come to this museum, don't forget to look up because there, chances are there's a plane hanging above you. It's kind of cool. Wow, before computers, an actual wind wheel. Help you do calculations. Amazing. Some smart people came out with this stuff, that's for sure. Ah, this is a neat little sign. This is a <clears throat> pretty neat Lunar Survival Challenge. They give you a scenario and some cards and you have to determine what's the most important out of the 15 things. And they're missing four of them. Um, so, anyway, it looks like a neat challenge. And then they tell you the reasoning behind it. So you use some reason and logic and uh, pretty cool. Challenge the kids. A nice little interesting fact about ion engines and how they help satellites stay in Orbit. They don't need much thrust. Pretty cool. Sign memorabilia from some show astronauts. So we got a spacewalk. Pretty cool display case of all the rockets. And high altitude planes. And they give you a list of what they are. Sorry, the lighting's not real good in this part of the, of the museum. It's kind of a it needs to be updated because they have SpaceX uh, 2010 first launch and they don't have it in the display case and of course they don't have um, Dragon or Falcon capsule or the heavy rocket that's going to be going to Mars. That'd be cool to see that in this display. It's a nice little light up in your active display. Space Shuttle Main Engine SSME Propulsion Propul Propellant Flow. I can't read today. Another interesting fact here about space shuttle, look at this space shuttle engine, 500,000 pounds of thrust, the range, and look at that, design life 20, 700 seconds, 55 starts. And yet you look at what SpaceX is doing with their relaunchable, reusable rockets and boosters, and uh, much more efficient. Looks like this is closed, but there's a single stick over there, and can you fly for 12 seconds like oval right? Apparently it's down. But that looks like a fun little interactive display. And this is the Aviation Hall of Fame. Pretty neat. Sometimes you just need to look back, take a peek up, and look around. 
Douglas DC3 Simulator. This is cool. MiG-21. In here says, please don't open, so we're going to respect that. But boy, it's really cramped in here. And dark. Yeah. Oh, the button's crammed in here. Oh, it's even in Russian. That's so cool. Not, uh, not super comfy. Pretty neat. Pretty neat. The replica of the Wright Brothers plane, 1903. Nice little display case here, memorializing uh, soldiers that fought in the Vietnam conflict. Accommodation medals, picture with President JFK, some money, and then some letters. What might it look like when people would mail you postcards and letters. And some of the tools and equipment the pilots would have in their helmets. Some models and mock-ups of the heli helicopters. Flag that was captured. Look at this bomb sight B 47 Y 4 optical bomb sight. Once again, American ingenuity, intelligence really came up with this design so they could continue on their take evasive actions and still keep the target in sight. Okay, so far, this is the coolest thing I've seen cross section of an engine. The technical manual for the F 100 PW 200 engine cutaway. Injection section, compression section, combustion section, turbine section, augmenter section, man, that's cool, and similar exhaust, wow, look, so this thing is, goes from, give you a size of the scale, that's crazy. So that last little bit was a Howard Hughes exhibit. We flew around the world. It's also a pretty good engineer, apparently. A lot of movies written about him. Movies written about him. Movies filmed about him and books written about him. The Spruce Goose. Buying a hotel in Vegas towards the end of his life. Kind of a little, a little centric. Most billionaires are. Ready, Elon? If you're looking for a collection of Aviation Week, these are real, these aren't just props. Pretty neat. There's a little bit about this plane. Little by wing. A little rocket racer. Oh, this is a replica. Pretty cool though. Not a big seat. Looks smaller than the MIG seat. Look at that. Cost the guy $2,500 to build. It took 19 months. That's pretty neat. Build your own aircraft. All these people, the forerunners, innovators in aviation or any field, doesn't really matter. Movies, I mean, name a famous actor 50 years ago. You know, if you're not seven years old, you're not going to know who they are. It just shows you the fleetingness and the vanity of life that we could strive to be the best fighter pilot, the best whatever, and ultimately, after we pass from this earth, we're nothing but a, at best a plaque on the wall. And remembrance so friends you know these things are great fun to enjoy god's given us eyes to see and minds to enjoy all these wonderful things that this world has to offer but ultimately one day it's all going to come to an end and how will you do on judgment day how will you stack up you know as if it doesn't matter what your belief system was before this point in time the Bible is very clear. A book written 
in the span of 1500 years by 40 different authors on three different continents telling one con consecutive continuous story about man's sin and brokenness fallenness and our need to be restored and redeemed by a savior jesus came to save people from their sins in matthew 121 you'll bear a son and you'll name him jesus for he will save his people from their sins so friends don't let your life be a plaque on the wall with no eternal purpose this life is fleeting it's just a vapor it's just a dash but eternity is forever so i would encourage you implore you to cry out to the god who made you you are so uniquely created you're the only one in the universe with your fingerprints with your dna with your likes and choices and preferences god made you just that way you are so special he loves you so much and he wants you to come into right relationship with him and the way to do that is just believe repent it it's just turn from your sinful ways and put your faith and trust in what christ has done on the cross of calvary he's an innocent man willingly shed his blood to make atonement for you so where's your seat is your seat on the way to heaven or are you on the seat to eternal damnation and destruction and hell only one way to get to jesus only way to one way to have your sins forgiven jesus said i'm the way the truth and the life and no one comes to the father except through me so friends if that's you if you're outside of christ while you're watching this video Cry out to the living God. Ask to be forgiven. Read Psalm 51 in your Bible. That's Psalm 51. And look at what repentance looks like. When David, committing adultery and murder, is aware of his sin and cries out to God and says, Against you and you alone, Lord, have I sinned. All of our sin is against a holy God, a just God. He's too holy and pure to have iniquity around him. That's why he sent Jesus, the perfect sacrifice. To die for our sins and we can just know that but experiencing it applying it and really repenting of your sins admitting to god that you've sinned against him asking him to forgive you put your faith that jesus has paid the price and when eternity comes when you pass from this life the bible says in john 5 24 Jesus says, Truly, truly, I say to you, whoever hears my word and believes in him who sent me has eternal life. He does not come into judgment, but he's passed from death to life. So friends, we have the words of Jesus. We have the Bible. We have truth. Absolute truth in this world. And that is scripture, the Holy Bible. And if you're doubting that and you're dealing with that, it's, it's because you have rebellion in your heart. You want to live your own life your own way. No one's going to tell me what to do. Even the God who, who gave you this gift. So friends, uh, thank you for watching this video. I'll finish the tour by showing you whatever else is in here. But, you know, just a sad reminder of seeing legends and heroes on the walls. They're not going to be remembered except for by the, these plaques. You know, the most important memory is to have your name written in the Lamb's Book of Life, to be forgiven of your sins, to uh, have everlasting life with the God who created you. That's the ultimate gift. That's the ultimate prize. Nothing we can do to earn it. The Bible says, For by grace are you saved through faith, that not of yourselves. It's the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. So there it is. Trust in Christ alone today for your salvation. All right, friends, thanks. Like and subscribe for more great content. Uh, this appears to be the whole museum. And we're headed towards the gift shop to give you a quick tour of that. But please like, comment, subscribe. Um, open to helping people with resources about finding out about Jesus, finding out about eternal life, what they can do to inherit it, which is basically nothing other than trusting completely in Christ alone for salvation. There's nothing you can do to earn it. It's a gift of God. There's another plane we didn't highlight. Nineteen thirty-four Veronica LB. A little dining area here, and then the area for the kids to play. Looks like a basket from a hot air balloon. Some simple controls.
Here's a shot of the gift shop, nice and clean, lots of space, some neat little airplanes and models and paraphernalia. So this is all about propulsion, this whole wing, this old hangar, it smells like an old automotive shop, it just has that smell to it. Models way for an engine, so you definitely have to check out this part of the tour. Look at the creative, intelligent thought that went into building all these things. And then you look at the cells and the flagellum and the turbine that spins at 10,000 RPM and it's inside your body and you think it just happened randomly. It's like saying, I think this put enough metal and time and chance together and this will build itself. That's what that's what's thinking that's like. This is really neat. But a neat fact here about this replica, the first propeller made. <clears throat> Grab a screenshot of that and read that, it's pretty neat. And if you've been watching the video, so here's a nice tribute to this man with this building that we're in, is named after. It talks about his life and his accomplishments and everything he's done for aviation and, and the world in general. And once again, it, it's fleeting, you know, maybe 120 years if you're super blessed and fortunate. 80, 77. We don't know how long we'll live. That's why it's, the Bible's very clear and says today is the day of salvation. Friends, I'm not trying to be so preachy and so in your face, but I truly believe that God can use these things, uh, videos, YouTube, gospel tracts, pastors preaching, the Word of God speaking to you uh, to bring you to a heart of repentance. Romans 2, 4 says, Are you despised the richness of His goodness, forbearance, and long-suffering, not knowing it's God who grants you a heart of repentance? So I pray that that's my prayer for you today, that... The Lord would grant you a heart of repentance, that you would not be like Pharaoh and harden your heart and shake your fist at God, but truly come to a place of trusting Him alone for salvation. Thanks again. This is uh, wrapping up the the tour. That's the guy Bueller that this building was named after. Uh, did wonderful things. A lot of great people in this world do a lot of great things, but. It's not our goodness that's going to get us salvation. It's not our goodness that's going to merit anything in God's eyes because we're all sinners. So thank you so much for listening. Thank you for watching this video. And uh, I pray that this touches you and moves you in a way that brings you into repentance. And, and on that day of judgment, uh, I pray that you are trusting in Christ alone and nothing in of yourself. Thank you and God bless you.